In the last video I've introduced a few experimental techniques in our lab, but a really important one that I've left out was physical vapor deposition, or PVD. Well an ultra-high vacuum system is not something commercially available, and that's a place in our lab where your innovation and creativity gets to spread its wings. This has been quite a big part of my research work all these years, and I am grateful for having our amazing group members around for all these. This video is not really about the story of my PhD experience though, but when I was making this video, I realized that your learning process here is going to be largely virtual, so my goal is for you to come away feeling like you have participated in designing our experiments yourself. That is, cover all the awesome stuff, but in a way that makes you think, yeah, big deal, that's not too hard for me to come up with. So let's go into some details. As you might recall from discussions in our previous video, we know that the density of a vapor deposited glass depends on the deposition temperature for many glass forming molecules. Now you wish to examine the effect of deposition temperature on a new glassy system. Suppose you have a functional ultra-high vacuum chamber, and it can be tailored to meet your needs. What would you do if you want to study the effect of deposition temperature on the properties of a vapor-deposited glass? You might say, okay that's straightforward, just control the temperature of the substrate. And since we're looking at how density changes with temperature, if you're satisfied with 5 data points in a curve, you're good to go by simply doing 5 experiments. But if you want more, say 20 points, then you won't want to be fed up with doing the same experiment 20 times. There is an easy fix to that. If there is an identical temperature controller on the other side, and the two stages are set to two different temperatures, then you can bridge a silicon substrate in between and have a temperature gradient generated. The properties of glass deposited on different portions of the temperature gradient will vary accordingly to its local temperature. Isn't this exciting? Well here's more. By the same logic, since film thickness matters, we had to further modify the vacuum system to be able to monitor the thickness of the glass film being deposited. This was an easy fix since thickness monitoring devices are widely popular. The change of thickness with time is also known to play a role in the stability of PVD glasses. We were able to fine-tune the heating power applied on the glass forming material to alter its vaporization rate, and therefore the deposition rate. Okay so much for the brainstorming. The things you are going to see next has taught me what it means by the saying, talk is cheap. Because I've marked most of the elements in the drawings and photos, I won't spend time explaining what they do in this video. I just wanted everyone to appreciate how complicated the setup is. Technically speaking, some of the ideas in this design weren't exactly original, people have reported prototypes in the past. What we have done, however, is we have substantially improved the accuracy, precision and film quality of temperature gradient samples in vapor deposition experiments to a whole new level. Equipped with the state-of-the-art ultra-high vacuum system, we were able to prepare vapor deposited glasses of TPD, as functions of both film thickness and deposition temperature, and characterize their density. At the beginning, I introduced the concept, glasses, from those formed by cooling down supercooled liquids, so I'll include the data for a liquid quenched glass made at the standard cooling rate of 10 Kelvin per minute. Because this is a well-defined state, we can use data from an accurate model to replace the actual experimental data. We shall first look at the case of a thick film of slightly over 200 nanometers thick. As expected, the as-deposited film is denser than liquid-quenched glass, less dense than supercooled liquid, and shows the largest density change around 0.85 Tg. However, as film thickness is reduced to 50 nanometers, some of the glasses are also becoming denser than supercooled liquid. We soon realized that this was no artifact after seeing that a 37 nanometer film shows the same phenomenon. And in fact, for the sake of clarity I have omitted the thickness between 37 and 53 nanometers, but all these films do have a certain deposition temperature range where the vapor deposited glasses are denser than supercooled liquid. We got blown away by this when we first observed this happening. As we recall that supercooled liquid is a metastable liquid representing equilibrium, it defines the limiting configuration that a vapor deposited glass can relax to achieve. But in this figure, we clearly see that this so-called equilibrium limit has been violated. 
Now, now what is the significance of this? As we were talking about the PVD process, at a given deposition temperature, free surface molecules are hypothesized to relax into lower energy non-equilibrium states. That PVD glass is what has been extensively studied by the glass community. However, for what we are seeing here, the thin vapor deposited glasses are lower in volume or energy than even the supercooled liquid. Structural relaxation will not allow the molecules to bypass equilibrium, so this thin PVD glass is probably a new state of matter, and may require a phase transition to be formed. Aside from experimental results which are always truthful, much of this theory is still pure speculation. For what it's worth, these results are certainly a strong force of motivation for us to figure out what exactly is happening in these ultra-dense thin films. I shall move on with a few attempts we've tried to raise the stability a little further. Here's a term I'd like to introduce, film-substrate interactions. We prepare molecular glasses on a silicon substrate, not denying the credit of its excellent optical properties, it also isn't quite the best fit for organic molecules. The surface of silicon is a native silicon dioxide layer, with hydroxyl groups hanging outwards. And TPD is an organic compound. The polarity between the two are a terrible mismatch. Just so it doesn't get confusing, this sphere of TPD here is not a film, but a droplet of liquid TPD at high temperature. It can choose whether to spread out on the surface or to stay away from the surface by curling itself up. But this repellence is something we can change. We can adhere a thin polymer layer to the silicon substrate, polystyrene for example. If aryl groups replace hydroxyl groups on the substrate, then the TPD film will interact a little more strongly with the substrate. Obviously the polarity of the substrate is making the difference here, but if we want to be a little more quantitative, we can look at the contact angle between the liquid and the substrate. On the silicon substrate the angle is large, while on the polymer substrate the angle is small. In terms of film-substrate interactions, a smaller contact angle indicates a stronger interaction, and vice versa. Now what happens if we vapor deposit our glasses on polymer substrates instead of silicon substrates? Here's some data I have that shows the difference. When we look at a bulk film of around 200 nanometers deposited on a weakly interacting substrate, and perform a heat and cool cycle to transform the vapor deposited glass to liquid quenched glass, this is what the process looks like. While we are still interested in the density increase, there is another metric we can pay some attention to. At some point above TG, the vapor deposited glass wants to break free from its packing configurations, and become a supercooled liquid. That temperature point where deviation happens is called the onset temperature of transformation, the higher it is, the more inert the stable glass is. Well if the substrate is replaced from weakly interacting to neutral, then in the same heating ramp, the transformation is delayed to take place at a higher temperature. But the density of the vapor deposited glass on both substrates are about the same. This is no longer the case in thin films though. For this pair of vapor deposited glasses slightly more than 20 nanometers, not only is the transformation onset temperature higher, but also the density of the glass film deposited on a neutral substrate is higher. This indicates both the higher kinetic stability and a higher thermodynamic stability. To understand the significance of this result, we have to know that previous studies on thin films showed that you cannot have both thermodynamic and kinetic stability at the same time. Quite the contrary, in our results, the two flavors of stability actually do come hand in hand. And, man, oh man, there is so much more to say. So much that I don't want to call it done here. The fundamentals of stable glasses extends to corners well beyond measuring density. So I strongly encourage learning more about our work on our group webpage, the links are in the description below, and that, I think is really where things start getting more interesting. Also please feel free to contact us to discuss anything you want to know about our research. At the end of this video, I want to thank those who made my research work, and this series possible. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed these videos. See you in our video channel.